Hello Ghana, my name is David Oscar. Welcome to what promises to be another exciting episode of the Corporate Comedy Series. Now, if you've been following the series of the past six weeks here on Viasat 1, you would know that we've shown you content that was filmed from the beautiful metropolis of Tamale. This week, however, we are about to show you excerpts of our other comedy initiative called The Comedy Bar, which we've been filming the last Friday of every month from the Citrus Bookshop here in Osu, Accra. The focus is on comedian DKB. Now, I like to think that DKB is one of the most underrated comedians in this country. But check him out. This is a humorous journey. My name is David Oscar once again. Welcome to the show. My friend clap. DJ cut, cut, cut. Thank you all very much for clapping. Show some love for yourselves, man. You are supporting Ghanaian comedy. You see, at the moment I picked the mic, two ladies walked off. James Brown, you're a very stupid boy. <laughs> for telling them that I'm going to slap them. My name is DKB. There are no more slaps. It's just a mistake. Ghanaians, leave me alone. Ah! Introduction. Oh, meet my boy David, meet my boy Eric, and meet the slapper DKB. Why? Hey, white folks, uh, there's a show in Africa called Big Brother Africa, right? So I went there and like, a lady provoked me. I tried walking off, she was in my face. I had to create space. <laughs> and then it happened. So it was, it was not a regular, it was a hefty. You know Mbumbulu? You know Shaka Zulu? Type of slap, so. And you know this is the wrong time to be a white man or white lady. Because all along, I mean, folks were laughing at the jokes. Pigeon jokes, tree jokes, I can't they tell us, say, I can't. Nonsense, you have white people here who can give you visa and you are still speaking pigeon. <laughs> I can't tell us, say, the baby, 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 come on, laugh now, laugh. <laughs> you see the Ghanaians laughing, <laughs> and the white guys, what's he talking about? <laughs> I don't know, they're just laughing. And the white girls, I love you so much. Uh, Listen, if you can't laugh by negotiation, I guess you can laugh by force. No laugh. <laughs> laugh, laugh. Laugh. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Do you want to die? Hey, don't act like I'm not you. You are next. <laughs> yes. Why are you, I mean, why people are not afraid of the gun? They love the gun. It's, it's with them. If you don't love the gun, how can you have school shooting? A stupid child. You, you have to lash your children. You know, when you're lash, your brain is on point because your brain doesn't want that pain. So when you're going to do a foolish thing, the brain tells, hey, my friend, do you want me to go through that? No. <laughs> Abroad, a child picks up the father's gun, goes to the school. I am so despicated and I'm frustrated. I need to kill somebody. Why are you looking at me like that? Boo. You got to say, boo. Everybody should be like, boo. What? The teacher is like, calm down, Tommy, calm down. Do, let me tell you one thing about you. The moment you tell them to calm down, that's when they become more foolish. <laughs> calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. You, you, you told me that I'm not good, I'm not brilliant. I, you, you, didn't, you gave me zero over ten. Poor. <laughs> foolish boy. <laughs> White people, no. Hey, I don't blame you folks. Enjoy yourself. I'm just kidding. But listen, the child picks the gun at home. He's taking it to school. The father sees him. Hey, Tommy. I hope you haven't picked some. What, what's wrong with white daddies? They always have to talk bouncing. I hope you haven't picked some dangerous. You haven't picked some dangerous. Fuck off, dad. None of your business. You do that in Africa. Let me tell you, our fathers have evil senses. They are no sense evil. The moment you pick that gun, put it in your bag and go to school, just look at you. Huh? Ah, ah, come. What's in the bag? Then you tell him, it, Daddy, tell me, tell me, oh, a fool. It's none of your business. Oh, you have businesses. Give me your school fees, foolish boy. So you're a businessman and you're making me pay your school fees. It's none of my business. Give me my school fees. I don't have any business in it. And then you take it to school and you are shooting and shoot your teacher. What? Let me tell you. In Ghana, we have something called cane. We have various sizes. It's like we have various sizes and chips. Do you have any kids here? No kids, you're in trouble. Listen, some are very long and soft, you know, so, you know, like the slave masters, they can wiggle it, you'll be standing, you'll see the cane, but it will lash you from behind. Yeah. Then you hold a gun to your teacher. 
<laughs> you know, a Ghanaian teacher will laugh. <laughs> you are coming to kill me. <laughs> you kill me to me. Hey, students, you want to kill me. Pull the kid. Kill me. Now, you are torn between killing your teacher right now. Kill me, kill me. She pow! Ah! Kill me, kill me! She pow! Teach, but kill me! Pow! Kill me, pow! Say, take the gun, please, huh? African can you, you will talk true. I'm telling you, bleach your kids. Don't die. I mean, I mean, what's the problem with a few fingerprints on the on the child's skin? It's nice. Because when see black kids, when we meet to talk about how we're beaten. Charlie, last night it wasn't easy. Though. <laughs> my mother used electric wire. She whipped my back like 16 times and she knocked my head with an electric iron. And guess what? It was hot. <laughs> I did not know. Man, they didn't beat you. <laughs> me, my, my father carried deep freezer. He smashed me on the head, and my mother was also holding my microwave. Then she was doing rebound. Boa. Boa. Yes. <laughs> but talking about gun issues, let me tell you, there is the, the only race you can never kidnap Indians. How can you kidnap an Indian? Hey, baby. <laughs> Shit. You point a gun to an Indian, you will end up buying bullets from the Indian and buy the, mo the newest model of your gun. Whenever you point it to him, yeah, take your time. Take your time. I'm ready to die. You are ready to shoot. But I want to know something. Do you have the new lead bullet? <laughs> then you are confused with the gun. <laughs> you mean lead bullet? Hey, lead bullet is very, very fast. You shoot, the risk against die. <laughs> what do you have? It takes me two weeks to die. Very, very long, too long. So, so, so you mean you, you're not going to die? No, I'm not going to die. I have lead bullet. Hey, bandit, bring him lead bullet. <laughs> take your, hey, take your time. One is $200, okay? I give it to you, 180. <laughs> you keep threatening, and it's like, your gun is even rusty. Hey, and the Indians get pissed off. Hey, 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 you are going to kill me. I don't want to die with a rusty gun, okay? Rajesh, bring him the new model. But I tell you, like, you are framed up. Your money is gone, everything. And then I just say, like, can, can I get transportation? Hey, you are not supposed to pay taxi. Give him one CD. The Corporate Comedy Series is proudly brought to you by Castle Mog Stout and supported by Citrus Book Cafe, Mountain Hotel, and Good Life Studios. But all I have to say is that tell the national whatever that they should stop that thing they are doing. It's wasting so much time on TV. From morning till late, pink sheets, pink sheets, pink sheets everywhere. What pisses me off is the way those Chachu Chikata and those people handle the case. Chachu, talk for us. Hurry up and talk. You, you know, People hype Chachu so much. Chachu took up that guy. 17 years, he was in law school. That guy won't jump in. And then Chachu took up that yes. And apparently he talks slowly. And Baumier is also opposite. You see Chachu talking and it's like, you know, the whole world is waiting for him. So Dr. Baumier, you are saying that. Then he pauses. The pink sheets coordinates with the police station. And then Baumia always talks like he just woke up from sleep. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Do you know what killed me about the petition? Was I said, you get that general mosquito. The noisiest of all. You see this man on campaign trail. Yes, we don't care. And no, he always has the things all around. I don't know what's happening. He said, this is this. This is this. this, this, this. So I, when they said this man would be the witness book, I said, hallelujah. This guy is going to prove to the judges that there is action. General Mosquito entered the witness box. He turned into a mosquito. Now this man was in the witness box. No matter who you are, when you enter, you mellow. The man was there. Yes, your man. Yes. I, I wasn't at the police station. Yes, please. Thank you. Stop me, for, am I lying? 
How many of you were disappointed and said, Ricky? For me, when I say motive, I love that. Ha, I want to share one of them. What is this? Imagine the animals, you know, imagine the animals are gay. And, and, and you see the nonsense they told us that animals have gay tendencies. Have you ever seen a lion gay before? Gay lion in the jungle. How can you hunt the antelopes again? Hey, rawr. Rawr, don't you see me? I'm a lion, rawr. Hey, antelope, come here, antelope. Rawr. Can you imagine gay walking? Oh, oh. There's one animal, I think that animal is gay. Total gay. And I hate that animal. Not a dog, but a cat. A cat is gay. Because, no, 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 no. See, somebody suspicious enters the house. What does the dog do? Bro, bro, hey, what's going on here? Ha, woo, hey, hey, hey. This cat is just looking at my you. What a sexy guy. And then, I don't know about. When cats see another guy in their house, they, they start dangling for him. Check my body, check my body. <laughs> a cat is gay. Leave it at that. And you go from UK. Why do you want us to pay three freaking thousand pounds before we get in your country? Because what, how many how many UK citizens have like three thousand pounds? Because as far as I know. Some UK people are really broke. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I, I, mate, like, can I get a little one pound? Mate, uh, give me 25 quid, yeah? Broke. <laughs> and then you want an African to pay 3,000. It's even more than the visa processing fee. My flight, my accommodation, and my whole life in UK. You want me to pay that? Ah! Yes! If the, listen, it, it's simple. If they come, our, our step drops on the similar one. If I come to Ghana, you drop 20,000 Ghana. 20,000 citizens, you come, you don't know, you eat KK, you are finished. Because <laughs> I know you white people, watch that, KK already, church night, let me just have a little try. Oh, sir, your 20,000 is gone. <laughs> Simple, final, yes. 3,000. The chaos that would hit UK if, if they institute that. Can you imagine an India? Because they said we are from high risk countries, Ghana, Nigeria, India, so we are all on the list. We're supposed to pay 3,000 pounds. High risk. So our country has breast cancer or tuberculosis, high risk. Our country is near stroke. So we should pay 3,000 pounds so that they'll save our lives with it. An Indian man, Indian man. He's supposed to report 26 July. He has given him 3,000 pounds. Do you know the number of rupees you must combine to get 3,000 pounds? He will go and borrow from Panjit, Ranjit, Sungit, Sumbai. He will go to the whole Mumbai. Then you tell him that today is 27 July. So you give him his money. You see what will happen to you. You come and tell us. Because Mr. Mumbai, yeah? You were supposed to come yesterday. So. It's today, you, you, it, it's, it's gone. Hey, hey, relax. Yesterday, today, no difference. No difference. Get me my money. Hey, I understand, okay. And Indians will break it down for you. Okay. Okay. You take 2,000 pounds. You think I'm going to stay in the UK for three years. Take it at one year and start from. You have 350 by something day. Take it at every day is one pound. So yesterday, I stay here, one pound gold. Give me two thousand dollars. <laughs> you so happy to you. And take that money from a Jamaican and tell him he's one day late. He gets to the high commission. Hey, brethren, they come for me cheap time because they go back to Jamaica. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Mister, please. You're supposed to come yesterday, so you want it to go. So, oh, we, we told you to come yesterday, yeah? So, uh, it's, it's good. 
You see, you don't want no jokes, brethren. You see, you come into serious place. You have to, have to know that you have to bring in money. Seriously, it, it, it's gone. Please escort him out. Like, I don't know what I'm saying. The next thing you see, right back is get to. Benjamin, let me tell you something. Yesterday they go to the guy from the gym. They come up up like 10 minutes here, they come at the end of it, so they take me money. <laughs> they are going to see fire. Listen, <laughs> and that's just how it is. This same bread will come to your boy. You know, they will be, me come for the money, bro. Me come for the money. Where the way up, boss, then? Boss, have you come for the money? You can go, oh, relax, you're gonna give me give me the money, boom, the world's class. And Jamaican man, when you give him the money, he will take a decision. You make me use the energy. I let two pounds for energy drink. <laughs> you you can go, you're in trouble, you don't know. For Ghana, Ghana, if you know what you get on say if for somebody who is spiritually. You try to bake it. <laughs> you try to bake it. Like you don't behave, the next thing is voodoo. He ties you up in the door and starts guessing you. And then your heart commissioner tells him that he's not going to return his money. Hey, you know, <laughs> you won't return my money. I don't know. You just come straight to Ghana and you see what will happen. Your heart commissioner will be on DDC. Uh, the new point is still right. <laughs> We're gonna make sure the phone. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's that. I, I think I'm sorry. Right? We, we have food to hurt you. <laughs> right. And now he starts speaking like, <laughs> I don't want it. It's a down syndrome. I see the high. <laughs> the next thing is in BBC reports, British High Commissioner charmed by Ghanaian immigrants. And you travel here to the hotel you meet a fool. Eh, you say you give my money. Let him take the money. <laughs> and you see High Commissioner say, Yeah, I bet him. Are you in this guy in this Please. Show me you see fire. <laughs> I believe you had fun enjoying yourself watching the corporate comedy series. Of course, seeing excerpts from our comedy bar, which we've been filming from the Citrus Book Cafe. Don't forget to tune in again next week, 1.30 p.m. on this same channel, Vars at 1, and let's embark on a humorous journey. My name is David Oscar. The show is proudly brought to you by Castle Knockstout with support from Citrus Book Cafe. See you again.